Welcome Round Rock ISD families. Thank you for joining us for our online family connection series. This is not a live session, but a recording, so you can watch it anytime you'd like. I'm Jackie Syriac, one of several parent liaisons on the Round Rock ISD parent team. We hope you and your family find this useful and feel free to share with others. Today's recording is part of our digital citizenship series with a focus on cyberbullying. To get started, let's take a look at our goals. Our first goal is to gain an understanding of cyberbullying. Our second goal is for families to explore the topic at home. Now, let's dive deeper into this topic. What is cyberbullying? Cyberbullying is the act of using digital devices, sites, and apps to intimidate, harm, and upset someone. Cyberbullying could include rumors, embarrassing pictures, mean messages, and creating fake profiles. There are some key terms related to cyberbullying as well. Those are digital drama, upstander, bystander, and ally. Digital drama is when people use devices, apps, or websites to start or further a conflict between people. An upstander is someone who responds to a bullying situation by confronting the bully directly or by telling a trusted adult. In contrast, a bystander is a person who sees what's happening but takes no action to help. Another key term is ally. An ally is someone who responds to a bullying situation by supporting the person being bullied. Offering support as an upstander looks different in a face-to-face -face setting compared to a digital setting. In a face-to-face -face setting, an upstander might sit with someone who looks lonely in the lunchroom or even on the bus. In a digital setting, an upstander may tell a trusted adult that harmful content is being passed around. A bystander, on the other hand, watches quietly and does not take action. In a face-to-face -face setting, a bystander might walk by and take no action even when they see someone is being physically harmed. In a digital setting, a bystander might receive an image that's hurtful to another person and do nothing. An upstander, on the other hand, may reply with a kind comment or ask the sender to explain why they sent it. An upstander could also get the advice of a trusted adult on what to do next. As children grow up, especially in the middle and high school years, it's more and more important for them to practice upstanding. Round Rock ISD has a specific curriculum to help your child deal with digital conflict. The video we're going to watch comes from that curriculum. The source of this video is Common Sense Education, a national nonprofit committed to providing trustworthy media related information. Let's watch. People fight over text all the time. You know, digital drama is a thing. There are ways to avoid digital drama, but I think it's in a, it's mainly inevitable. You need to like get ready to like have something be said that maybe maybe you won't like. On social media, you know, everything social wise gets a bit more intense. It just causes so much unnecessary drama. I would say sometimes I need to take a break from it. Cause sometimes it's too much for me. And then if there's like drama going on, I'll set it aside. And even though there are steps that we can take to reduce it, it's not going to end. You can say anything over text, which you would never actually say in real life. It's so much easier to fight with your friend over the phone than it is to fight with your friend in person. That's a new thing. People can just hide behind, you know, certain accounts and certain places on social media and just say whatever they want to say. We kind of have this disconnect that I think sometimes social media can cause where it develops like a almost a tolerance for a lack of empathy. It's really important to think about how other people are going to take it because whatever comment you make can be seen by potentially thousands or millions of people. Now more than ever where somebody makes a rude comment and they get 
put on blast for it. You don't see the other person's reactions, so you just keep on going. You don't know if the person is sad. You don't know if they're angry. You don't know what they're thinking about you. Social media can be can turn into sort of a negative space when there's a lot of like anonymous posting. No one else knows who that person is, so it creates a lot of like tension and drama within friend groups. In the comment sections of posts that you know are viral or popular, I'll see someone voicing an opinion and all of a sudden there'll be a thread of even hundreds of comments, people just arguing and arguing and not even knowing each other. You could get insulted very easily, like on your appearance, on your like just anything that you say, anything that you put out onto the internet. Something so small can escalate to something so big and as it escalates, the topic can completely change to something that's really big. People that I know actually worry about how many followers they have compared to other people, if they're not getting as many messages. When I see like the people around me getting into drama on social media, kind of makes me not want to be on social media. It just seems easier to not be a part of that. I have a couple friends who are very close, but they fight a lot. I'll get screenshots of their conversation from both of the people just being upset and sending long paragraphs about how upset they are and instead of talking to each other about it in person. And so I've suggested both of them multiple times. I would say I'm more comfortable talking face to face because like on social media, it's hard to like communicate like a sense of realness and like emotions. The best way to deal with digital drama is to leave what's happening. Maybe it's a group chat that you're in, just to leave that because the more that people talk about it, the more that people are going to think about it, and the more you might get into it and you might say more things. It is really easy, easy to get your feelings hurt, but you know, you just gotta like, it's just kind of, they're just hiding behind a screen basically. I think the best way to deal with digital drama and help mediate it is first of all, I always suggest talking in person because that's always easier. Avoiding confrontation is something that I'm trying to be aware that I don't do. A way that I can just disassociate myself from the negativity is to just not respond. Now, let's explore a scenario and see how you can encourage your child to be an upstander. We can talk through what might make your child hesitate as well as some solutions so they feel ready to face situations like this. The scenario is that a friend sends an embarrassing picture of another friend around over text. That's a pretty realistic scenario. What might make your child hesitate from being an upstander? How can you support your teen with this? Let's look at some possible action steps you can recommend to your child. They're listed there on the right side of the slide. Your child can reply with a kind message about the friend, they can ask the person who sent it to explain. Your child also has the option to tell a trusted adult in their life. By the way, these are great suggestions for adults to get into the habit of doing as well. We understand that cyberbullying is a complex issue that goes beyond just one conversation. To support families, we're sharing five strategies to help you stay engaged. First, make sure you and your kids understand cyberbullying and its impact. It's important to understand the impact of one's actions, specifically that there are consequences for online behavior just like there are when we're face to face. Next, check in. Just like you'd ask your child about their sleep, exercise, and eating, stay on top of their online life. This next one I use a lot in my own family, encourage breaks. If you notice your child is getting pulled into digital drama, help them take a break. It's great if they can determine for themselves when they need to step back, but they might need some help setting limits. Putting devices to bed at a specific time, plus breaks for mealtimes and face-to-face -face connection can help kids recharge. This next one is big. Review action steps. Walk through what to do if your child is being bullied online. The action steps will include first, stepping away. Ignoring a bully can be very effective. 
If the bullying continues, take screenshots or print out evidence. Then you may have to block the person. If it gets worse, report the behavior to a trusted adult. Talk about who those people are and make sure your child has their contact information. And finally, use positive words. Students often hear, don't do this and don't do that, but have they been complimented on what they're doing well? Compliment your child on emails they send that are courteous and well-written. Highlight texts that are kind and written with care as examples of good online practice. As we can see, drama can escalate online pretty easily. We encourage you to keep the conversation going with your child around ways to de-escalate a heated online situation. Well, we've reached the end of this video. We have our parent program's email on the screen, so please reach out. We want to hear from you. Any questions you might have, any wonderings, any feedback, all of that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. We really hope that you've learned some new information and a couple of tips to engage in important conversation with your kids about this very current topic. Once again, thank you and we'll see you soon.